You ever have that uncle that looks a little too long at you? And then you find out he's saving pictures of you from Facebook literally to his hard drive and that special dedicated folder that he has of you. Ew. Yeah, that's today on My Crazy Family. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to the program. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. On Apple Podcasts, check it out. You can get advanced episodes of the show. You can binge away on the archive, and you can do it all commercial free. Uh, just sign up to our channel to support it. It's uh, You can get it for uh, three days free. Try it for three days free on Apple Podcasts. Just search uh, the My Crazy Family Podcast. You also get access to the Fear Thy Family features as well. You can binge away on those uh, shorts as well. Tony and Stacy Cole with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? Oh, I, it's just gross. Just ew. Just oh, the ew. Uncle, uncle in the pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's always, uh, that's always a little weird. You know, it, it's funny. I, you know, I, I always talk about, you know, we all have that crazy. I don't think, I don't really have uh, an uncle or anyone that I ever felt weird. I had one that was just kind of like Kramer, I'd say. Uh, on Seinfeld, just bizarre. just bizarre, but I never felt, um, you know, predatory or anything like that towards anybody. Um, it, I mean, I'm a, a man, but I never saw or so I'm demonstrating that towards anybody. And I'm usually pick up on that sort of shit pretty quick. Uh, but I know well, that's the thing yeah. too. you being male, you know, but yeah. you're more, like you said, you're more in tune to that. You seem to, to be able to, You've got creepy radar. You can just pick it out. I got creep dar. <laughs> I do have creep dar. It's great. You do. It's great. And it makes you really sad at the same time because you walk around the world and walk around society and you're like, oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, something interesting for, uh, we're talking about family and, and crazy families. Um, here's, here's something I, I think some may classify as crazy that I'm doing. But I'm, I'm doing this as a morbid experiment uh, okay. uh, in in leftover holiday food. OK, so all right. Got all the leftover stuff from the holidays and I'm just sick of it. My daughter is sick of it. My fiance yeah. is sick of it. We're all fucking sick of it. And by the way, I got engaged. Uh, so <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> just be, by the way, I'll, I'll congratulations, using, thank of you. course. So I'll be using that term. Uh, it's not just girlfriend anymore. Um, gotcha. And uh and, and and we're just we're done, you know, but there's still a lot. We made a lot. And there's the options, you know, you can put it in the freezer and then think, oh, someday when I'm, I'm craving stuffing, I'm going to go thaw out this rock hard thing of bread. And yeah. it never happens. It ends up getting freezer burned and you throw it away midsummer. So I'm trying something different. I have a freeze dryer. And oh. and I put the stuffing. I put the cranberries, I put the green bean casserole and I made this like uh, kind of mix of sweet potato and butternut squash with molasses and pecans. And it's like, it's desserty. It's, it's good. Um, and very kind of fallish, uh, and had a bunch of that left too. So I put all those in there together. They are now currently freeze drying. And when it's done, I should have crunchy, crispy Thanksgiving to, to relive at my leisure as, as little so snacks. <laughs> you just rehydrate this then, right? No, no. I, I like eating everything freeze dried. I mean, in theory, if, if you want to re, if you want to get the, everything rehydrated, yes, you just add water and kind of recook it um, uh, or reheat it. But I like more so the idea of just having like a bag full of stuffing that I can just eat like, oh like, God. like Cheetos. <laughs> Oh my or, god! Or green bean casserole that you can eat like Cheetos, uh, and uh, I'm I'm very curious to see how this turns out. I, I checked it a little bit yesterday. I broke off a little piece of the uh, stuffing, uh, and pretty good. Needs a little bit further to go in the dryness, but that's uh, that's my little experiment. You know, you might be able to market that Thanksgiving in a bag. You Thank, know, like yeah. a portable Thanksgiving. There's been other things that I've been freeze drying that I'm seeing people are selling Skittles. Uh, also, uh, this is, in fr- yeah, you can get Skittles freeze dried people and people sell it for like 
10 bucks a bag. I could make a killing if I really wanted to, to freeze dry Skittles and had the time to package and ship them. So basically what people are doing is they're just looking in their cupboard going, what can I throw in yeah. here? Yeah. Well, me and Harper have talked about for a while trying to do a YouTube channel or a TikTok or something of can you freeze dry it? And basically you go to like Taco Bell and get like a, you know, a crunch wrap or a Mexican pizza, freeze dry it and see what it tastes like freeze dried. Oh my God. You know, and, and just kind of do some of that. And I think we, we, we talked about doing it last year. Maybe this year we'll actually execute it. But I, I kind of, this is my first one. I'm doing that's uh, straight up Thanksgiving stuff, not just like freeze drying, uh, you know, beans or stuff from my garden uh, or wow. yeah, freeze dried cheese is actually pretty awesome too, by the way. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure what to think of that. It becomes crunchy. It's like a real Cheeto, but it's cheese. Wow. I love it. You can even buy that at the store now. Whole food sells uh, one of, I forgot what the brand is, but you can buy freeze dried cheese. Moon cheese is what it's called. Uh, oh, I've heard of that. I yeah. guess I didn't realize that's what it was. Yeah, it's freeze dried cheese. I mean, you you can pay. I mean, at the store they're like you know six seven bucks for a tiny bag. Uh, but I I just do like massive loads of freeze dried cheese, and then just kind of grab a couple for a snack. Oh my goodness! Well, yeah. then you know exactly what's in it because you it's know cheese. It's cheese. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's uh, I like experimenting with my freeze dryer. People, some people get it for like apocalypse. I'm like. Freeze drying Laffy Taffy. <laughs> and oh, Laffy Taffy comes up pretty amazing too. It puffs up like a blimp and then it's like eating uh, air because it just it disintegrates in your mouth. It's really cool. Anyway, enough about wow. adventures with freeze dryers. Uh, let's talk about a creepy uncle that likes to take pictures or, or steal pictures from his niece's Facebook page and saves them on the private drive. I want to hear this story before I truly judge it. Okay. All right. Well, we can certainly get into it. it. says, I'm not sure what to do about this or how to bring it up to my family. My brother and his wife just had a baby girl. And I want to know if I should bring up my concerns as the only girl minus my mom in the family who gets that creepy, scared feeling around my uncle. The backstory as to why I think he's creepy. Since I was little, I was always creeped out by my uncle, and I still don't fully know why. I remember he would always tickle me and even pin me to the floor doing that even when I screamed for him to stop and he didn't listen, and I don't think my family thought anything of it. He would always force me to give him a hug and a kiss on the cheek, even if I said no. I found uh. out in the sixth grade when he told me that he would take all the photos I posted on Facebook and save them to a drive or a CD. I then blocked him when I found out. So she was in sixth Good. grade when he was doing this. Yes, this is fucked up. Anytime I call my mom and she's talking to my uncle, he always says stuff like, how's my beautiful niece, my smart, beautiful niece, or other things along that line. Just, it makes my skin crawl. I also get this rapey vibe or something like that from him that I can never shake. But I don't think anybody else in the family feels this way about him or knows about everything. It's just gross. He's pretty, yeah, it is. he's pretty out there in the open with it, too, which makes me kind of surprised that more family members aren't uh, seeing this because it doesn't necessarily seem like it's being hidden uh, or he hasn't like really done this, you know, in a private setting where others wouldn't yeah. you know, lead on that he's, you know, the, the only thing I was thinking of where uh, and this is not the case whatsoever uh, would be a situation. It's like my, my grandpa, he he didn't. Uh, or quite get you know like this stuff is on the cloud you can watch it uh, or mm -hmm. look at it whenever you want um so he would uh print emails every email yes. he got he printed um and he would print photos too yep. and, and that was a generational thing it wasn't a creepy thing it was just he he knew that if it was on the hard drive it was saved and that's just how he operated and in 90 something he said fuck it i'm just gonna do it my way because it still works. And, but he wasn't like saving specific folders of, you know, like one of his granddaughter's, you know, pictures or anything. He was just, you know, like kids of the pictures of the grandkids and, you know, he would hang him up on the wall like a grandpa does. Uh, nothing right. creepy. But this, this is different. This is very, uh, 
He's putting him on a fucking CD. Why? Yeah, that's not good. And the other thing that that really something I've become uh, acutely aware of, I guess, maybe in the last oh many many years, when somebody doesn't like to be tickled and they tell you that, you fucking stop. Yeah, that's not an invite to to keep going. No, I I think there is a real fucked up thing in the zeitgeist of a lot of men, and it's 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 the well if she acts like she doesn't want that she wants it right and the fucked up part of it is we're kind of taught that from an early age uh and and that's how guys start to operate and think if that's all they're taught and that's kind of uh the reactions they get are usually laughs or something and then it it goes far beyond that as they get older and then they realize oh yes no means no hopefully they realize that but there's this this way of thinking that uh, i would say a lot of times it's in not necessarily the most recent of generation uh they have their own bunch of fucked up shit but i think it's it's more i don't know almost like 30 and above you you had a lot more of that Mm -hmm. growing up and it was always kind of like that. Um, doesn't excuse anything whatsoever. I'm just saying it was in the zeitgeist of that that's what we were taught. You have to be a grown-up and say, that was fucked up and wrong, and this is not how this works. Uh, but I think a lot of guys, they they don't, guys don't like to change. Nobody likes to change. Uh, but especially guys sometimes, where it's like, this is how it is. And uh, 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 uh. Uh, But I don't think that that's the case in this sort of scenario. This guy seems to me like, uh, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was yeah. larger than her, pinning her to the ground and tickling and all that. And it, it's one thing, you know, if if there's a little joking around or something, it's another if it's just like, stop, stop. And it still doesn't stop. Well, and the, the, the rest of the family is noticing it and doesn't do anything to step in and say, uh, OK, that's enough. Yeah. That Stop. You need to stop. And I'm sure it's a passed down thing where, you know, someone yep. in the family did it to them and. It's just normal. Even if you did feel uncomfortable, you then you start, you're told uh, it's okay. That's one of the most confusing things to a child is yeah. is to know that something is wrong uh, or you're hurt or whatever. And then the grown up just come. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Dust yep, it off. You're fine. Dust it off. I mean, sometimes, yeah, if it really wasn't a big deal. And I'm not talking this. I'm talking like you tripped on a Frisbee and you just fell down briefly. You didn't. You don't have blood. There's no, nothing injured. You just kind of scared yourself. Yeah, I, I like that. Get up. You're okay. You just got scared, you know, but you're fine. It's another if there's some real traumatizing shit going on. It's like, you're okay. You're okay. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, and it's usually the person who is reacting that's trying to calm down the situation, and they know damn well it's not okay. Like, there's a bone sticking out of your skin, and you're like, you're okay, you're okay. Well, obviously, you're not. So yeah. let's address what's going on. Yeah. I would imagine this would be a difficult one to even bring up to the family either, because yeah. they all seem to think there's nothing happening, and that would be a fucking big blow where you're going to have people taking sides. Yeah, you are. So I would, I would say... Think about that uh, with the path you take after this. Uh, And what is it worth to you? Um, You know, he he, if he hasn't physically done anything to you, he's been creepy. You can certainly just avoid him for the rest of your life. Um, And that be that. Uh, Do you value the relationship you have with your family as a whole right now? Because if you do, uh, you have to make a choice. Is it worth telling other people about this? You know, because you're going to likely have that breakup happen. Or, or yeah, you're going to you, be the one yeah. person in that family that gets pretty much yeah. much pushed out because nobody yeah. else sees this as yeah. a problem. Or you'll be ostracized. Exactly. Yeah. So even though you're in the right, I get it. But just, you know, tread lightly. Think about what you think about the repercussions. And in no way am I saying to a victim of something like, you know, don't report or... But, you know, this wasn't this wasn't rape. Um, this was a creepy uncle that was doing creepy shit. Uh, and yeah, d- just think about that before you drop a bomb in the family. 
But, you know, the other thing is there's got to be some other people in the family maybe that she can go to and and just say, look, here's how I'm feeling. Yeah. Would you kind of be my buddy so that the next family get together? Keep an eye on me with him. And if you see something, just be my witness to this. What you I know? would do, I would, I would wait till the next big family gathering, like a wedding, maybe something, something that's really meaningful to somebody else. And then at the middle of it, yeah. Excuse me, everyone. Excuse me. You, oh, you, no, you, you clink no, your glass no. just like that. And you do the toast to the bride and groom. It's really nice and warm. And then I just say to them, you know, if you guys have any little ones, don't let our, our uncle come over by them. Because when I was a kid and then just let it all out and just say everything. Oh, my God. And um, and then ask where the CD is at the end of the speech and see what what he says. Yeah. <laughs> Or you could go and confiscate his hard drive. And as they're showing pictures of the happy couple, you can mm -hmm. say, oh, and here's some that Uncle Jimmy had on his hard drive. Let's see what's on there. Yeah. Accidentally switch out the hard drive. So it's playing yeah. the, the photos folder from his hard drive and not the wedding uh, photos and, and just see what comes up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, look, it's pictures of me. Yeah. And who are these other people? Oh, my God. And what is yeah. this? What is this pen pal you have here? His name is yep. Josh Duggar. That seems a little oh. awkward. Yikes. <laughs> if Yikes. you have a, a crazy family story to share with us, we would love to hear it. You can uh, send it in at crazyfampod.com. That is our website, crazyfampod.com. Uh, or call it in 24-7, uh, 833 Cray Fam, 833-272-9326 to uh, share your crazy family stories with us we'd love to hear them what else we got all right well i'm trying to write this in a nutshell but it's a bit difficult i am a 29 year old female and my husband is 29 we live across the street from my husband's mom she's 57 and my husband's older brother who's 32 we have lived here for nine years i'm struggling with this dynamic at their household as is my husband but it's hitting me harder than him because of my own upbringing my brother-in-law is taking advantage of my mother-in-law to the point where she is paying all of his bills. She buys him his necessities. She takes him out for meals. If he needs something, she'll get it for him. Might I add, he doesn't have any disabilities. He is perfectly capable of paying his own way. He does have anxiety and depression, but I feel it stemmed from his lifestyle. Not only does my mother-in-law pay for everything, she lets him run the house. He uses her vehicles, and when something isn't right for him, like she misplaces the keys, he gets mad, and then she comes running back in to find the keys. She is completely at his disposal. My husband and I have a one-year-old, and I'm finding that being a grandma isn't a priority for her, and it makes me sad. My anxiety stems from all of this, but to add a cherry on top, I'm very uncomfortable with his dating situation. He has a history of dating very young and naive girls. He's currently dating a girl who is 11 years younger, so she is... 20. Hmm. Um, he met her when she was 15 oh, through God. his previous young girlfriend. My mother-in-law let this happen. This girl has been a stay-in girlfriend for a number of months, and I've expressed my dismay to my mother-in-law, and she just told me to get over it. Um, There's 15. a lot. Yeah. You've noticed since she was... is like... Anytime you're an adult... Uh, you know, nearing 30 and you know someone when they're 15, yeah. that, that's not appropriate. It's, it's one thing if you're like 18 and she's 15 and, you know, you're going to high school together or something and then you all get older and it's, you know, a little more on the same page. Uh, yeah. It's a total other thing when you're, you know, you know, inching into your 30s and you're like, oh yeah, I knew when she was 15. That's, yeah. Yeah. The the time difference is so vast between a 15 year old and a 30 year old. Oh my it's, God. I, I, the changes that your body goes through, the changes that your mind go through, there is no comparison. You are completely oh. different human beings in different phases of your life. Which makes them easy prey for someone yep. like this. Yep. Because they know that. they. It's not just that the girl really likes you. It's she's young and dumb. And yep. you were two ones. Everyone is. And inexperienced. And you kind of come through as this, this older guy that's really into her. And 
you know, shows me things that most guys her age, you know, can't or won't. And, right. and, oh my gosh, and he's not that much older, you know. I've seen people in their, their 40s, they people in their 30s. Yeah, but you know what? You're both not in your 40s and 30s. Right, so, exactly. So, yeah, that does, the older you get, the more it kind of becomes not such a big deal. Not when you're that young. Not when you're, not when you're that young. Well, uh, and when you're 15, she, she can't even drive a car by herself. She can't um, secure a hotel room. She can't vote. She can't drink. She can't make medical decisions for herself. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. But but he wants to make sweet, sweet love to her. Oh, uh, yeah, well. That's, um, there's so much wrong going on here. I mean, the, 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 what starts out when we kind of learn the psychological profile of the person, okay, anxiety and depression, totally get it. I fucking yep. have those too. But you know what? You don't define your life by it. You find no, ways you of uh, coping with it. You never quite can hit that delete button. It would be lovely, but you can't. So you find ways of living your life and getting stronger. And the more life you live, the more easy usually it kind of becomes because you you keep trying to find ways of, of finding that strength to deal with things. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of people... Um, it, it they become that becomes their identity and they live by it and they loathe in it and you know there's there's some serious you know anxiety and depression yes the treatment is is usually needed um i've gotten treatment myself um and that's where you, you stick with that sort of thing and you you do your damnedest to pull yourself up and you don't let that be your identity a lot of people though i feel kind of let it become the identity because it's easier again being a victim and everybody loves the victims these days uh, to get that sympathy and, and get all that. But you don't realize that, yeah, that attention may kind of feel temporarily good. It feels a hell of a lot better if if that's not even on your fucking resume anymore and, and, yeah. and you can just live your life. Uh, that feels a hell of a lot better. But a lot of people have never experienced that. So they think it's the best they can get. Uh and it, it just becomes very sad and a real downward spiral where you have this sort of thing. Anxiety, depression, they're probably very insecure with themselves. It's probably why mm -hmm. they prey on younger women. Uh, yeah. Thank goodness this person is of age. As of this point, um, you know, there really isn't much you can say about it. She is of age. Um, and I don't really know... Uh, it, it honestly isn't your place to go in and say, you know, you shouldn't be dating this 20 year old. I think, you know, it's more so stand back and watch the Titanic sink. Uh, yes. Because I don't know that there's a lot you're going to be able to do about any of this unless you want to jump on board and watch it sink with you and hope to God you get a fucking life raft as it goes down. Uh, but that's not a guarantee either. Well, and I think the closest, I mean, the fact that they live across the street, so they're exposed to this situation all the time. And yeah. I think this this woman feels a bit of resentment because grandma is caring for her son, her 32-year-old son, um, taking care of bills and stuff yep. and really not being much of a grandmother, it sounds like. Yep. And she's resentful of it. But you know what? It might be best to keep grandma at arm's length because... It sounds like she's got her own situation going on, and maybe you don't want to be part of that. These, maybe you just yeah. these are all do adults. your own thing. Everybody's an adult here; they're yep. making their own decisions. You may certainly have better ideas on how this should be handled, but you know what? A lot of people can't contemplate better ideas, and they're only going to do their idea. That's how it usually works. They yeah. need to come across and have this revelation themselves and say, "This is fucked up." You just saying, "I'm on your side. This is an injustice." is going to backfire. Uh, and and the mom's going to think you're judging her and, and her allowing this to happen for so long. The 32-year-old uh, idiot brother is, is going to feel offended and certainly uh, play the victim there because he's played the victim most of his life. That's why he's living at home at 32. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cause a rift. And then your husband's involved, and that is his family. And it's going to be awkward for everyone. So, sometimes, uh, more times than not, as I've learned, just shutting the fuck up is usually the best route to, to take here. You're not being harmed. There's no child in danger. Uh, if, if, this, if you said that she was dating a 15-year-old actively right now, yes, fucking say something. 
she's 20. It's, it's a live and learn situation, I think. Uh, and yeah. you're, you're watching people make bad choices. Yes, you are. Um, you can't stop people from making bad choices most of the time. It, it doesn't appear to be an imminent. They're going to fall off a cliff. Um, let people do their things. It, it's hor- it's not right. It's not good. It's not healthy. Um, but I, I, you're not going to be the savior here either, quite honestly. No, you're really not. And I think you're going to get yourself all worked into a tizzy about something you can't fix or do anything about. And maybe it's your business. Maybe it's not. It's hard to watch. Yeah, completely. And but like, I think it's best. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just leave it alone. You know, it's it's their rat's nest. Let them deal with it. Exactly. Just keep your distance. Unless you see something of, uh, like I said, if you saw someone being abused, meaning he's having a relationship with someone under the age of 18. Um, yeah, speak up then. Uh, with the rest of this, yeah, it all looks horrible. Ugh. But... <laughs> Um, would you like to keep your sanity or or dig deeper into the crazy hole over here uh, that might suck you in and spit you back out uh, with one less husband? It's a really good point. Yep. So, and and you and you and your husband should discuss this, and you you two should be on the same page, and you should express these concerns to him if you haven't already, and just say, and because of this, I, I don't want to cause a rift. I just don't really, I don't want to be that involved with them. Um, I'll, you know, I'll see them at the holidays. I'll be kind and cordial, but I, I just don't want to, um, they, they really, they really bug me and yeah. hope, hopefully your husband's reasonable enough to respect that and understand that. And maybe hopefully he feels the same way. Um, but I don't know what that dynamic's like. So, uh, crazy fam pod is the website to write in your crazy family story or call 833 cray fam, 833-272-272. 9326 833-272-9326 24 7 and share your story what else we got well it's mother-in-law day today Yay. um mother-in-law has recently discovered the wonders of medical self-help websites and she has diagnosed herself with several various ailments ah. of course they're always serious and or life-threatening i wouldn't care so much but she insists on telling everyone that she meets about her thrombosis her hypoglycemia, or her mini strokes, etc. My husband and I were visiting her this past weekend when my cell phone rang. It was one of my mother-in-law's friends lecturing me about my mother-in-law's recently diagnosed diabetes. Okay, she told me how I should be more sympathetic to her and what I should be doing to help her. I looked across at my mother-in-law. She was, at this point, shoveling a large piece of cake with ice cream into her fat mouth. <laughs> I decided to call my mother-in-law's bluff and asked her if she was diabetic. How come she was eating so much crap? Well, she told me that her diabetes was rare because what she ate did not affect her blood sugar. I was sorely tempted to pick up that whole cake and just shove it in her face. Thank you for letting me vent. Um, your your mother-in-law does not have diabetes. Um, I come from a family full of diabetics. I am on diabetic watch as we speak. Um, I know diabetes inside and out. I've I had a cat that was diabetic. My dad, my brother, my aunt, my grandparents. I had a squirrel. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, this woman is so full of shit. Um, but there you, is no rare diabetes. But I'm do you, sorry. But do you think she believes it? Do you think she's lying? Or do yes. you think she really read something somewhere on the internet took it as fact and said, that sounds like me and just self-diagnosed. No, I think what's happening is she knows it'll get her attention. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if she puts it out there, everybody's going to feel bad for her. Everybody's going to pay attention to her. She's a, a, she's an attention whore and she wasn't getting attention any other way. So she needed, needed to pick out some rare diabetic condition that doesn't exist Mm -hmm. And put it out there. A thrombosis? Yeah, you know, it, it sounds bad. Hypoglycemia it just means your blood sugar is low. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that, that people can be afflicted with that are not life threatening. But boy, if you don't know anything about medicine, they really sound awful. And and WebMDing everything is the last thing anyone should be doing. It, it, it's, exactly. it's like, yeah. I, I once knew someone 
who um, would self-diagnose quite often and, yeah. and, and go down these horrible rabbit holes. Um, and it was very difficult to pull them out of. Uh, almost to the point of like pretty much saying that they were a goner and they knew that their time was coming. And Yikes. and it was awful. Um, and then eventually, and, and, and then eventually uh, after some time, they did get a diagnosis of what was going on <clears throat> with that person's mind. And that was the one they didn't accept. <laughs> That's the one that eventually it's like, it was, it was looked at enough and to have, finally have someone say, I don't think that that was the right diagnosis. It's like, well, if you dig enough, you'll find that. But, and the thing is that definition was one fucking thousand percent on. I, wow. I did a lot of research on it. I read about it. I was like, oh my God, this 100% describes this the way this person acts. Uh, and i like, holy shit. But then it, it is one of those where you, it's like, you don't really want to have this diagnosis. Uh, and I think the unbearableness of the idea was too much to say. You know, or it wouldn't be a pity thing anymore. If, if there, you went around and said this, you had this one people wouldn't really feel pity they'd be like um look at the time <laughs> if, if they right. knew if they understood what it was so i i get it it's kind of a self coping mechanism but uh i just found that amusing where you know you can self diagnose all day but then you finally get one and you don't like it it's like nope not true not true yeah you can't throw it back i mean it, <laughs> no, it's no you know it's there it's there you can't undiagnose yourself god it's uh it's a magical world out there. <laughs> Isn't it though? It uh no, it it uh, it truly is. So, anyway, that was uh, an interesting story. Thank you for sharing that one uh with us. <laughs> uh if you have a story, well, you can always uh, call in uh 833-CRAY-FAM 833-CRAY-FAM to uh, share your uh horrible family stories with us uh, or write in. I mean, you can do it all totally anonymously. Uh, crazyfampod.com crazyfampod.com is in fact the website to uh, send in your stuff to we'd love to hear it uh, until next time ooh this too this too one more thing Apple, okay. Pod, Apple Podcasts go check that out try us for three days free get all the episodes commercial free the advanced episodes the archive uh, fear thy family it's all there to binge away on check it out Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Until next time, for Stacy, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to My Crazy Family. They're crazy and insane. My crazy family.